Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, may all of the grace and peace and hope of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you today. Amen. I had hoped for many, many things this morning. Still have great hopes for many things this morning. I, I hope that what we do here in worship as a congregation, what we're about, I hope it makes a difference in people's lives. We're in the middle of January, and I think at so many different points in the last couple of years, we've hoped that by now we wouldn't have very many COVID worries. Now we hope that maybe this Omicron thing is short-lived. We hope that people won't get as sick. I had hoped that we come together and we'd have all of our financial questions of the next year answered and figured out. Eh, we're getting there. I had hoped that my back would be completely healed by today. We're getting there as well. I had also hoped that today I'd be watching my favorite football team. Only reason I'm not is because they're not playing. <laughs> Knew that was coming. See, sometimes it feels like you got to hope because you've got nothing else. Not the kind of hope with, with something like a New Year's resolution, right? And if you, do you do that? Do you keep them? What, I, I don't. I gave up on those a long time ago. I, I heard, recently heard Jim Gaffigan. He's a comedian. He, uh, he announced to his audience, I have perfectly kept my New, Year, New Year's resolution this year. I have had pasta every day so far this year. If you're going to make a resolution, make one you can keep, right? They're so fleeting. Not talking about that kind of hope, because those, you know, you might have a desire for some kind of newness, but when has our own willpower ever really been able to make a lasting change? It's always something in the way. It has to be something deep down inside, because those are the times to hit your knees. Talking about something that lasts. Time to empty ourselves and then, and then be ready for what Jesus brings. Because he's bringing it. See, this beautiful story from John's gospel is the first of seven signs that Jesus performs in John's gospel. They're called signs and not miracles because signs point to something. They all reveal and point to who he is and what he's all about. There's water into wine. We wanted to make sure that we had the baptismal font full this morning because we were going to see if we could pull off that Jesus thing again. And, and see, then we'd have, we wouldn't have to worry about buying wine for the next of the year. That'd be wonderful. This huge amount he turns into wine. See, this was a sign that people would recognize the prophets, even like Amos said, when that Messiah comes, when the day of the Lord comes, the mountains shall drip sweet wine. It's a sign of who he is and what he's all about. And you notice that his mother, Mary, is hopeful. Even with his rather terse reply to her, she's hopeful that he'll do something. Just instructs the others, just do whatever he tells you. Something will happen. And what he brings about is, is an abundance and the best. We're talking maybe 180 gallons of wine now, wedding celebrations weren't just one night. That would really be something. They were maybe a week long. But when the wine gives out, the celebration is over. 
Jesus is displaying the abundance of God's love and mercy for us, and it is the best. That's why he does all of these signs in John's gospel. It points to what he, who he is, and they spark our hearts and minds to follow him, to see what he's up to, to check it out. It stirs something within us that we might be hopeful for whatever life can bring. And look to this year, I've been thinking a lot about hope. In fact, I, I, I by chance, uh, started reading and just finished a, a, a new uh, biography of Winston Churchill. Uh, not a brief endeavor, of course, right? But it's, it's wonderful, right? The, this, this book chronicles in great detail his first year and a half or so as Britain's prime minister starting in May of 1940 up until about December of 41 when the U.S. entered the war. The most dire of circumstances, every reason to give up and capitulate as the rest of the world was doing to Hitler. But what did he do? He brought hope. He dug down deep and brought hope to the British people now, without him, we'd probably all be speaking German. But some want to discount everything that he did and said because of his many, many flaws. I mean, they were many, and some of them are quite alarming. So then I turned to the one that we will recognize tomorrow, Martin Luther King, Jr., you think of that civil rights movement 50 years ago. Dire circumstances. Again, really overwhelming odds. And we could look at just about anything that he said or wrote and find inspiration. He brought hope in the midst of great, great difficulty. And there are those who want to discount both he and everything he said and wrote because of his flaws, which were many. But you see, both of these individuals are both really broken and flawed people. But they still managed to bring hope to other broken people in the midst of great difficulty. See, now, if you want to look somewhere where, where you can find words of hope and not discount them because of someone's flaws, you can only look in one place and to one person. This one who just turned water into wine. Pointed to the reign, the kingdom, the experience of God in our midst. See, we come together here. We have, we have all the reasons in the world for, for a dire outlook for 2022. We have many, many reasons. We have all the reasons in the world. Give up. We will not. It, we're here together. And yet, it, it remains true that the lowest level throughout this pandemic, the lowest level of mental health concerns are among those who worship regularly. Interesting, isn't it? Because we can look to this one who performed seven signs to point to who he is. He turned water into wine. He healed, healed a, a, Ro, a Roman official's child. He healed the man at the pool. He fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. He walked on water. He healed a blind man. He raised the dead. Cares for you. You see, we're tired. We're weary. 
comes to this pandemic stuff, we're sick of it. We need to tend to our souls. So here's your practical piece for today. Try this. We have all these words of hope before us. Do this. In this next week, two minutes, take two minutes, 120 seconds, each day, 14 minutes of the next 10,080 minutes, only 14. Two minutes a day and do this. Sit quietly. Give thanks. Find that one thing for which you can give gratitude to God. One thing. And then, and then, ask this. And then listen. What does God have for me today? What is God's will for me today? Two minutes. And then I want to hear about it. I would love by the end of the week if you sent me emails and texts and calls and, and, and messages and whatever, stopped in and said, here's what happened. Here's what I experienced. Two minutes a day. I'd love to hear about it. Because our souls need tending and they need it right now. Think about it this way. If we have any physical malady, what do you do? Take care of it. Do we ignore it? (laughs) Well, it'll heal itself. If I don't think about it, it goes away, right? Oh, I just broke my leg, but if I don't think about it, it'll be fine. No, you take care of it. We don't ignore it. But why is it that we do when it comes to the health and the condition of our souls and our relationship with our God? Why do we do that? We have all the tools. We have all the information. The solution for a soul sickness, the salve for burned hearts, The wrap for our broken lives, it's right before us. There are hopeful signs. If only we care to see them. I do have great hopes for this coming year. We are going to continue to gather for worship that we can be together and give God thanks and praise. We're gonna continue to tend to our children and youth. We will continue to work with all of our ministry partners to feed and clothe and house our neighbors in this community. We're gonna continue to share and study the scriptures and look at our devotional lives and what it means to be in relationship with this God and each other in this world. We're gonna call a new pastor. These are hopeful signs. Hopeful signs of Christ's presence and work among us. Because Jesus brings us the, an abundance of the best. God's love, God's mercy. That's enough for today. Amen.